<clears throat> well, today is October the 30th, 2016. It's a Sunday night. It is 8.35 at night here by Lake Michigan. We are in the last Sunday of October 2016. Tomorrow is the last day of October. It is Satan's holy day tomorrow, which has been called Hollow's Eve, but I have always considered Hollow's Eve to be Satan's holy day. It's when the witches and the demons and monsters all have their sacred celebrations. So I have never in my Christian life observed Satan's holiday. So Yep, tomorrow, well, as I mentioned, in our Christian circles, we, we remember the Protestant Reformation. So today was Reformation Sunday. It's when we remember the Protestant Reformation. It's when Martin Luther nailed his 95 Theses on the Wittenberg door, which some have says was the beginning of the Protestant Reformation there in the 17th century. So anyway, uh, today I ended in my October 2016 diary. I ended on page 892. I only wrote two pages today. Today I watched professional football. I watched the Patriots play the Bills. I'm a big New England Patriots fan. Uh, so yeah, I watched that. And then I had to cook dinner, and so I didn't really, I didn't think I even read today. I think uh, this morning I got up really late. Uh, I don't think I really read anything today. I had to go grocery shopping, fed the birds. I just didn't really get around to reading anything that I can remember. I did get out to read this morning. This book, Paul's New Perspective, Charting a Sociological Sociological Journey by Garwood P. Anderson. I've been reading that, this book in the morning for devotions. And uh, I also have planned throughout the month of November 2016, continue to read Biblical Authority After Babel, Retrieving the Solas and the Spirit of Miraplast in Christianity by Kevin J. Van Hooser. I'm going to continue to read this throughout November. I'm still reading Hermeneutics as Apprenticeship, How the Bible Shapes Our Interpretive Habits and Practices by David I. Starling. And I plan to read in the month of November, The Day the Revolution Began, Reconsidering the Meaning of Jesus' Crucifixion by N.T. Wright. Uh, I got an email from Amazon, and I got a new Christian book coming in the mail sometime the first week of November, maybe, is coming out. It's on the uh, theme of the kingdom of God in the prophecy of Isaiah in the Old Testament. I don't think I got any of the Christian books coming out. I do have some secular books coming out in November. Uh, I bought that... Um, New Casanova biography because I have the the uh, autobiography of Casanova in my in my book collection, so I ordered that and I have some book on European history coming in November. So yeah, well, as far as uh, what else I plan to read in the afternoons, I'm still going to really read in November, the, va va the Village, the History of Greenwich Village, 400 Years of Beats, Bohemians, Radicals, and Rogues by John Strassenberg. I'm really enjoying this. Uh, I, I, I asked myself, why do I really enjoying this book? I suppose I just really identify with nonconformity. Uh, the people I really identify are artists, writers, poets, painters, people who are, don't go, the, who go out, who pursue their dreams, 
seek to be creative, people who at any cost sacrifice to create something, a work of art, a book, a novel, poem, uh, sculptor, people who are just seek to be true to their own selves and not go the way of the herd. So I like the village. I do plan to continue to read this novel, The Castaway Lounge by John Bullard. It's kind of a gritty crime novel. I might I might talk about it in the month of November. So yeah, I plan to read those. I still plan to read The Partisans, Marriage, Politics, and Betrayal Among the New York Intellectuals by David Laskin. These I'm going to continue to read uh, throughout the month of November. I do plan to go to a bazaar at the end of this week and they sell all kinds of stuff lots of crafts big goods but they also this is at uh, a retirement village and people sell their books and you always find sometimes you find some really good art books and some other books they're really cheap so I'm gonna go to that Friday morning I might find something uh, yeah today is a Sunday which means yesterday I volunteered at the Hendrick District Public Library used bookstore. I volunteer there every Saturday from 10 in the morning to 1 in the afternoon. And uh, when I was there, I read The Village. That's what I read when I was not helping people with their purchases. And I brought home these uh, used books from the library book nook. I found this novel by Virginia Woolf, Night and Day. Uh, I found out that I already have this in my Virginia Woolf collection. So uh, I'll probably take it back to the book nook next Saturday. I bought uh, this book, The 900 Days, The Siege of Leningrad by Harrison E. Salisbury. It says here in the back, this is uh, the New York Review of Books says, An Epic Story Beyond Compare. It says here in the back, The Nazi Siege of Leningrad, 1941 to 1943, when the city was cut off from the rest of the world, was one of the most gruesome episodes of World War II. Nearly three million people endured it. Just under half of them died, starving or freezing to death, most in the six months from October 1941 to April 1942, when the temperature was often 30 degrees below zero. For 25 years, a Pulitzer Prize-winning New York Times journalist, Harrison Salisbury, assembled material for this story, interviewing survivors, sifting through Russian archives, and drawing on his vast experience as a correspondent in the Soviet Union. What he discovered and imparted in the 900 days is an epic narrative Drawing on his vast experience, okay, I read that, uh, da, 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 his epic narrative of villainy and survival, one in which the city had as much to fear from Stalin as from Hitler. The author concludes by describing the disaster of the Leningrad Affair, a plot hatched by Stalin three years after the war had ended, in which every official who had been instrumental in the city's survival was implicated, convicted, and executed. In fact, the 900 days struck such a resounding notes at the end of its original 1969 pro publication that it was banned in communist Russia. So I got that. I also bought these two historical novels by Melanie Benjamin. The reason why I got the Abbott, this is called, they're historical novels. This is called the... Uh, Oh, I can't work the word is. What's the word? Um, elevator? Oh, I can't pronounce the word. It's a, it's a air, air, who flies an airplane. Ev. My mind just went blank. Anyway, it's a historical narrative based on Charles Lindbergh. And the, the character in here is his wife. It says, when Anne Murrow 
or a shy college senior with hidden literary aspirations travels to New Mexico to spend Christmas with her family, she meets Colonel Charles Lindbergh, fresh off his celebrate 1927 solo flight across the Atlantic. Enthralled by Charles' assurance and fame and is certain the aviator has scarcely noticed her, but she is wrong. Charles sees Anne, a kindred spirit, a fellow adventurer, and her world will be changed forever. The two marry in a headlines making wedding in the years that follow. Anne becomes the first licensed female guider pilot in the United States. But despite this and other major achievements, she is viewed merely as the aviator's wife. The fairy tale of life she once longed for will bring heartbreak and hardships, ultimately pushing her to reconcile her need for love and her desire for independence and to embrace at last life infinite possibilities for change and happiness. Now, I got this at the book nook, and I also found her newest one. This is called The Swan, The Swans of Fifth Avenue, historical novel. This is based on Truman Capote. It says here, the New York Times best-selling author, The Aviator's Wife, returns with a triumphant new novel about the New York's swans of the 1950s and the scandalous, head-making, and enthralling friendship between literary legend Truman Capote and peerless socialite Babe Polly. For all the glamorous stars of New York high society, none blazes brighter than Babe Polly. Her flawless face regularly graces the pages of Vogue. She is celebrated and adored for her ineffable style, the exquisite taste, especially among her friends, the alluring socialite Swan, Slim Keith, ZZ Guest, Gloria Guinness, Pamela Churchill. By all appearances, Babe has it all. Money, beauty, glamour, jewels, influential friends, a prestigious husband, a gorgeous home. But beneath his elegantly composed ex exterior, dwells a passionate woman, a woman desperately longing for true love and connection. Enter Truman Capote, this dimitive golden-haired genius with larger-than-life personality explodes into the scene, setting Babe and her circle of swans of flutter. Through Babe, Truman gains an unlikely entry into the inevitable, li inevitable lives of Manhattan's elite, along with unparalleled access to the scandal and gossip of Babe's powerful circle. Sure of the loyalty of the man she calls True Heart, Babe never imagines the destruction Truman will leave in his wake. But once a storyteller, always a storyteller, even when the stories aren't his to tell. Truman's fame is at its peak when such notable celebrities as Frank and Mia Sinatra, Lauren Bacall, Rose Kennedy converge on his glittering black and white ball. But all too soon, he He'll ignite a literary scandal whose repercussions echo through the years. The Swans of Fifth Avenue will seduce and startle readers as it opens the door into one of America's most sumptuous heirs. So I got that. I also had two other books by Melaine Benjamin that I've shown in previous videos. This is the autobiography of Mrs. Tom Thumb, and this is her novel, Alice. I have been, this is based on Alice in Wonderland, Alice, these are all historical novels on Mrs. Tom Thumb was in, I think, Barlam and Bailey's Circus. This is based on Lewis Carroll's uh, Through the Looking Glass, uh, Alice in Wonderland. So now I have four of her novels in our book collection. So that's what's... Uh, I don't plan to read any of these. I'll just put them out downstairs. I, like I said, I probably will read those Christian books and read The Village, read The Castaway. So that's it. So I'm hoping you're going to have a, a good Devil's Holiday. <laughs> Should I say that? I don't know. Anyway, good reading month throughout the month of November. I have seen on BookTube that it's non-fiction. Uh, this is a really good, good non-fiction book. The 900 Days, the Siege of Leningrad. Uh, 
This is a good nonfiction book. The Village, A History of Greenwood Village. Also, I plan to order a book that was mentioned on um, Booktube, Black Elk, The Life of American Visionary by Joe Jackson. Uh, the cousin of Black Elk, if I remember correctly, was Sitting Bull. This is The, the Lance and the Shield, The Life and Times of Sitting Bull by Robert M. Utley. I recommend uh, this. Um, uh, I collect biographies on, I hate to call them American Indians. I don't know what I would call them, but they would call themselves, I don't know. But anyway, this is uh, The Lance and the Shield, The Life and Times of Sitting Bull by Robert and Yuli. It's a good nonfiction book. And I hope to get in the mail next month, Black Elk. The Life of an American Visionary by Joe Jackson. When I was in high school back in the late 60s and 70s, uh, we often read uh, the writings of Black Elk, which was um, here according to my Encyclopedia of American West. There's an article on Black, Black Elk. He wrote what was called the um, Black Elk Speaks. That was a, something that you could, uh, when I was uh, among people who were into counterculture, they always had Black Elk Speaks and his book, The Sacred Pipe, and things like that, and talked about the ghost dance. And there's an article on the ghost dance here in the uh, Dictionary of the uh, American West. That's why it's good to have books like this. You want to know about Black Elk? You want to know about Sitting Bull, the ghost dance, the massacre at Wounded Knee. You can, this is a good reference book. And it's a non-fiction. So anyway, so I'm hoping once again that you have a good reading month, a good non-fiction reading month. Until next time, bye.